This is Homeschool 101, a collaboration between ABS Television and the Ministry of Education. Stay attentive and attempt all activities. And now, today's lesson. To be or not to be? To sneeze or not to sneeze? That's the real question. <laughs> Welcome to Homeschool 101 Theatre Arts. I am Nadia Brown from the Pay Secondary School. And I'm Zara Errol from the Antigua Girls High School. And on this first episode, we are basically, well, basically, basically. <laughs> looking at the basics. The, yes, the basics of theater. Uh -huh. And like any good production, rehearsal, even sports, choir, you always have to start with a warm up. Now, physically, it's nice to get the body going, all right? So we're going to do one that we want you to be able to do with us at home. Very simple. The name of the game is called Mr. Headley. All right, let's see how, you, how well you can follow instructions and how well you listen. So follow me. It goes, have you... Oh, dear. Have you seen or heard of Mr. Headley who was needed from the back? to the front with a hip, 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 hooray. So each part of the phrase has an action that should accompany it. All right, we'll go slow. Have you seen or heard of Mr. Headley who was needed from the back to the front with a hip, 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 hooray? Now you should have it by now, because y'all are pros. I know we got some real professional, live, ready Hollywood actors from Antigua. All right, now we're going to go faster. The thing about it is that eventually you're going to have to do as I say, but not as I do, because I'm going to try to trick you. You know, sometimes you have some teachers that try to trick you. <laughs> Pay attention to what I say. Ready? And have you seen or heard of Mr. Headley who was needed from the back to the front with a hip 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 hooray? Zyra got it? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think you got it. Yes, I no, did. No. Again. <laughs> Have you seen or heard of Mr. Headley who was needed from the back to the front with a hip 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 hooray? She got it? Yes. Y'all tell me, she got it, no? Yes. It's like Dora when Dora said, can you see? Anyway, <laughs> let's not get distracted. Now I'm going to do something different. You, the, the thing is that you have to keep looking at the screen. Don't close your eyes, don't look off. All right, ready? Have you seen or heard? <laughs> You're already out. I heard, it's heard. <laughs> Have you seen or heard of Mr. Headley who was needed from the back to the front with a hip, hip, hip? That is not a part of it. Hip, that, hip, hip. No, 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 you're wrong. <laughs> Pay attention. Yes. Have you, don't start yet. Oh, sorry. Have you seen or heard of Mr. Headley who was needed <laughs> from the back to the front with a hip, hip, hip? Hooray, all right. So everybody's warm, I right. hope now your bodies are going and your brain is going. We're going to look at very briefly, why is it important to begin your theater sessions with a warm up? What is the, the need for that in the theater process? And we're going to break it down to you in five basic steps or reasons. First of all, breath. Do you know how many people breathe wrong? Mm. Right? A lot of people tend to, would you mind demonstrating, to breathe from their chest. All right, so you want me to take a deep breath? Yes, take the a deep breath. The wrong way? The wrong way. All right, so. And exhale. That's wrong. You're not filling your diaphragm as much as you can. And when you start breathing from your chest, whew, you're out of breath. If you watch Lizzo, go on YouTube, look for any of her live concerts, not the videos, the live concerts. She's an example of someone who does not breathe properly. And don't get me wrong, I love Lizzo. Last concert I saw with her. Lizzo's hot. And she is hot, I love her so she's, much. She's hot. But she needs to do some more breathing exercises. And tell me if you can identify what I'm about to do with some of your local soca artists, mm -hmm. some of your choir soloists. Mm -hmm. Maybe they should bring us in. Because, yeah, come bring us in. You can yes. hire us to do workshops with you on how to right. breathe, right? But Some of your politicians, even pastors, when they're talking and they take that <gasps> big <gasps> gulp your in chest, between. Your chest shouldn't right. rise at all. Lizzo was singing in a concert. She's like, I toss my hair back, check my nails, tell me how you feel. So asthmatic. 
Right. So what breath what is important? What is the correct thing to do? You're breathing from your diaphragm, which when you inhale, turn to the side, when you inhale, your stomach should puff out like a balloon because you're putting air in. And when you exhale, whoo, it should deflate, like when you let air out of a balloon. And here's a little tip. If you have any pets at home, dogs, cats, if you have any babies, little baby brothers or sisters home, look at them when they're sleeping. They, we all actually anyway, start yeah, out breathing naturally. Even big people, when you sleep, you revert to breathing the correct way. So breathing is important, and that's why even in, in theater, especially where projection is, yes. uh, is important, the breath is the source of everything else. It's the beginning of all emotion. And you, you cannot speak, try it. Empty your lungs and try to speak. You can't talk unless there is air in your lungs. So you breathe properly and you automatically become more audible. All right? That's and nice. it's good for relaxing as well as if you have a very long speech or monologue, you're not <gasps> in the middle of your sentence. And as Nadia said, power, your pitch, your ability to project, all of that is breath control. Mm -hmm. Resonance, that's filling the different cavities in your body with air as well. Quick exercise for that, humming. Mm, and if you check it out, pinch your nose while you're humming. It vibrates. Yep. Mm, yeah, and it. with really good control, you can send a vibration to your chest, to your, your throat, head, to your head, your head yeah. nasal cavity. Uh -huh. Then we have articulation. What's Very that? What's important. That? That's a big word. The way we speak. How we pronounce our letters, mm -hmm. clarity, so that you can understand us. And it's always good to warm up your articulators, your jaw, your tongue. You need your teeth. Yes, you do. Your mouth and to a, speak. A really good way to warm up your articulators is through tongue twisters. That's generally one of the ways that I use with my students. Um, sometimes they hate them. We could try one or two. Yes, let's do um, Let's do... Which one do they dislike the most? <laughs> Let's do six thick oh. thistle sticks. So warm up first. Chew. So you, and you, you guys tongue. ever had um pal chewing gum? Who remembers um pal the, the pink chewing gum you buy from the corner shop for, for like ten cents? I don't know if they'd remember that. You see, I don't know if they still have pal. We mean they have remember pal. Everybody does chew pal. Your job won't tired. And you buy all two and three and eat them at the same time. <laughs> or just imagine it, imagine putting two packs of gum in your, in mouth. your mouth. It's chewing. Mm -hmm. All right. And you got to warm up the tongue. You stick it out. I don't up. Want, I don't want to stick out my tongue and take me. <laughs> I'll do it. Go ahead. Okay, you go ahead. So stick, it, stick it out. That's, that's not out. There you go. Up. To the side. To the side. Stretch it. You touch your chin. I don't have a long tongue. That's why I don't want to stick out my... But all those right? are some so. things you need to do before you do tongue twisters because all of this, our body, it's our tool for acting, for speaking. Right. And so now that you can, you can begin to feel the parts of your face, your mouth that you use to form and shape words, your articulators, we'll try six thick thistle sticks. Six thick thistle sticks. Say it again. Six thick thistle sticks. One more time. Six thick thistle sticks. Three times fast. No. Oh, I didn't send in your video. <laughs> Six thick thistle sticks, all right? Nice. What's next? Let us do tutor. Oh. A tutor who tutored the flute oh decided to tutor to tutor to toot. Oh so God. the toot to the tutor, is it harder to toot or to tutor two tutors to toot? What she said, right? So we'll just... <laughs> Just go with that one, because yeah. I can't do that. Okay, now uh, we finished looking at the importance of warm-ups yeah. and all the ways that you warm up your body. Well, so some of the ways, yeah. Well, some of the ways. We want to begin by covering some of the very basic basics. And so first off, we're going to look at some theater spaces. Yes. All right, now my third formers, are hopefully the third form of the theater art students across the country, should know the theater spaces. But because we want to bring everybody into our theater family, we're gonna go through them really quickly. So we're going to start with the, the proscenium, proscenium stage. stage, otherwise known as the proscenium arch sometimes. Yes. But um, if you've ever been to the Dean William Lake Cultural Center, our very own theater here in Antigua, you would realize that the setup is very similar. That's correct. And if you're looking at this image right now, the proscenium arch 
is that frame around the stage. It is an ancient style of theater, theater architecture to differentiate the performance space from the house. And the house is where the audience sits, That's otherwise correct. known as the auditorium. Right. All right. Now, this black area in front of the curtain here is what we refer to as the apron. All right. Which you can also see as Dean William Lake. Right. I'm sure if you've been there for any place, you would have noticed that sometimes the action actually starts in front of the curtain. That area is called the apron. All right. Nice. Now, another type of stage area that we have is the thrust stage. And just as how it sounds, it thrusts, thrusts ah, into the, the audience. audience. What is significant about this, and if we can just go back quickly to the previous image, if you notice in the proscenium stage, sometimes called an end stage, the audience only sits at, at, the, front. at the front. It's like you're looking into a box, a box that only has three sides that you can see through the fourth side. But with the thrust, how many sides does the audience uh, occupy? Three. There we go. And that's an example of a thrust stage. All right. The audience sitting on three sides for the thrust stage. I hope you are paying attention now, because there's and, a test. <laughs> and if you look at this one, it almost looks like... A T. A, a T, right? And it almost looks like... Where have you seen this before? Uh, In Antigua, where have you seen this setup before? Think Independence time. Think... Whew. The runway, yes. The run independence fashion show, yes. And the runway of yeah, fashion shows right. generally happen on um on on stages like that. Now let's differentiate because I heard recently of a stage type called the traverse. traverse. What's the difference between a traverse and a thrust? The traver, the thrust. Let's start with that. The thrust. The audience sits on three sides of the stage. Traverse, two. The audience is just on two sides so of the stage. So left and right, there's nobody sitting at the front. No. So it's similar to the thrust, it juts out, right. but there's no audience member sitting at the front. That is correct, All that right. is a traverse. And we have seen these, this is a production here, of a traverse stage, and the audience is on either side. Mm. And again, you may have seen this as well in Antigua and on TV, America's Next Top Model, uh, many persons use either the traverse or the thrust for fashion shows. Mm -hmm. But I am sure everybody in Antigua has been in a traverse in this unexpected space. Carnival. Hey! Parades. Carnival. That performance space actually becomes a traverse. Because you stand on both sides of the road. Exactly. Which While suggests the performers I, it, I have and mass players so come you're up saying, the road. You're saying to me that a stage doesn't necessarily have to be in a theater. No. A stage essentially can be Because remember, we're looking at performance space. space. Right. That's important to note. A stage can be in view of any, anywhere a performance can happen in view of an audience. So you have street theater, you have community theater. You can take it outside and take it on the road. You can have theater in the pasture. You can have it anywhere where mm -hmm. the performers are visible by an audience. And we're going to look at another popular type of theater space or stage called the arena mm -hmm. stage. Um, that's correct. And if you notice with this diagram. People sitting all around. All around. Now, if you have an arena stage or space that is set up like this and you're performing with no backstage with the audience sitting all around, it is also called theater in, in the round. round. Mm -hmm. So the director, the performers, have to be very mindful that the back is not turned to one set of the audience throughout the whole show. And then you also get really creative because you can't have a backdrop. This is also a good example because if you notice, this arena is more of a space than a physical stage rising up from the floor. Right. This is the arena. We're going to look at another type of arena that I'm sure most of you have been a part of. Oh, this is a good example where you see the furniture is there. There's no high ba uh, no, there's no background back yeah. or flats being used. Mm -hmm. And the next slide is going to show you. Ta-da! Our very own arena. 
Um, and prior to this, you would have had spaces to, or rather, in addition to this, we have spaces such as the Antigua Recreation Ground. That's right. We have the JSC Sports Complex. Yeah, Any basketball court or yes. football field, <laughs> basically, uh, with, with, which has audience sitting around. all around. And many of you have watched wrestling. You do realize that is a theater space. So even the sports that you're watching, as Nadia said, you go to recreations ground for football. You're actually in a theater space, a basketball space. game like that. Everybody's sitting around. This is awesome too because. This might be opening or halftime, and you're seeing special effects. Yeah. It's a production. The theatricality of it. All so right. you see theater is in everything. Mm -hmm. And then the last space is promenade, which as Nadia was alluding to earlier, you can turn any space into your performance space. And a promenade can be in the street. So what's a popular type, and of course the people come around, you can even move the audience with you. So what's a popular type of promenade that we see today? That we see today in Antigua? It has been done in Antigua. I know Shiva's done it a few times. Oh, oh um, uh, a flash mob. A flash mob. This shot is actually of a street dancer. If anybody's visited Times Square in New York, you'll see the performers around Times Square. And they've created that promenade space, sometimes moving the audience with them, yes. depending on what they're doing. This next clip is an example of a flash mob. It's about being spontaneous. It's about throwing yourself into something, not working long hours every night at the office. Bring your mind. What is this? I don't know. Excuse me, Constable, what, what is going on? It's a flash mob! Oh! We saw it on YouTube, remember? People get together and choreograph the dance numbers. We should go. This is kind of weird. No, this is joyful, Mitchell. You, of all people, should... They're good. Cut there. Yeah, oh, damn. that's right. I can and do... that was from Modern Family. <laughs> <laughs> that was from Modern Family, and you see, they took the first level of a mall and turned it into their promenade, their performance space. So that was performance spaces. Really quickly, we looked at the proscenium arch, the thrust, the traverse, the arena, or the theater in the round, and the promenade. Promenade. All right. So to recap very briefly as re it regards performance spaces, we looked at the thrust stage, the, pros Three. the proscenium art stage, One the side. traverse, two sides, the arena or the theater in the round, all around, and the promenade. I Where hope y'all are. are paying attention. I hope y'all parents out there are not like my children, you know. You see, you understand, and they say, yes, miss, and then you give the test, or you give the homework, and then they say, miss, I didn't understand. Pay attention, because there's a test. All right, now we're going to move on to the stage positions. And this is really, really important to know because this is the language that is used by directors and actors to figure out how to navigate the proscenium arch stage, which is generally the type of theater space that is used for plays, particularly in Antigua. Yes. All right, now it's, it's, it relates to this type of st stage because this is the one that only has Three, that has three sides and only has the audience looking in through the fourth wall, we call it. So all the directions are given based on the actors, actors left, left and right because the audience <laughs> is sitting from the other side. So right now, you are the audience. Right. And we are on the stage. Yes. Now, I'm a little dyslexic when it comes to, to directions. So we, yeah, I, I understand. So we're going to take our time and go through it, all right? The stage, ha the stage has nine general positions, all right? Now, back in the old days, the Shakespearean time, come back behind here for me, okay. The stage was what we call rate. In Shakespearean times, the stage was rate. So now we have seating that goes up. Back then, it wasn't the seating that went up. It was the stage that went up, and it was on a slant, which made the, uh, the area closest to the audience what we would call downstage because it actually slanted 
downwards, which would make Zara in your downstage area, yes. and I would be in your upstage area. And if we were both to come here, we would be center. Center stage. All right, so we have downstage, center stage, upstage. I have children that say all manner of things, front of stage, back of stage. I get, it's not, the terms don't change. Downstage, center stage, upstage. Now, in addition to that, remember, it's always from the actors left and right. You have left stage. This is left, right? Which would be your right as the audience. Right. But it's the opposite because it is always the actors left and right. So I would be to the left of center and Zara would be to the right of center. Now, if we were to mix those things and consider it in one big mashup of down, center, left, right. Let's, let's do center first. Center stage is, is the easiest one to remember. It's where you can get your bearings from at any point in time if you ever get confused about where you are at. Find center, okay? If I go, if I say down stage center, we're staying in this plane, but we're moving down. <laughs> and if I say, Upstage center, we're staying in the same center plane, but we're moving up. Come back center for me, please. E. And if I say center left, we've moved to the left of center. And if I say center right, that's to the right of center, okay? Now, if you were to say downstage left, where do you think she should go? She's gone down and to the left. And if it was downstage right? Oh, I'm you're, off frame, sorry. You're, you're enjoying it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> if, we were, if I was to move to upstage left, where should I go? It would be up here. And if I ask Zara to come upstage center, where should she go? Nice. And if she should go upstage right? Beautiful. Now we have a diagram that breaks it down for you very simplistically. Um, again, remember, it's always given from the actors left and right. And, right. right. and while you're talking about the rake stage, just really quickly so the students can see these parts of the stage, we're going to play a clip with the raked and revolving stage. Now I haven't seen that yet in Antigua. But it yes. is important to know that this is also a part of a stage, depending on the theater company and the amount of money they have. And the amount of money they have. So <laughs> sometimes you have stages that have a centerpiece that revolves or turns. So it's sometimes called a revolving stage or a turntable. You can actually see at the center that... The darker circle in the middle. And that is the revolving stage. And this is from the National Theatre in London. This is a clip from Frankenstein. And watch this. Now this is a great example of what Nadia was talking about with the raked stage. As you can see, the bed is tilted up, the stage is tilted upwards mm -hmm. towards upstage. Now watch this as the scene is about to change. Notice the area they're standing on starts to rotate and the whole set is changing. What's really cool is that sometimes at the back of this set could be set. another set. Mm -hmm. I love dual sets like that. Watch this carefully. If you notice, they're now going down, and that's also called a trap door. So what you have is a revolving stage with a trap door. With plenty money to build. Yes. Right. I think we'll ever get one in Antigua. I don't know. We should I speak would like to, one. Um, to somebody about that. Right. But we'll see. You know? So. Stage positions, really quickly, one more time. Really quickly, we got center stage. Center stage. We have downstage center. We have upstage center. We have downstage left, center left, upstage left. We have upstage right, center right, downstage right. Now, as a general note, there are certain areas on the stage that are stronger than other areas. Now, if my audience is here, if I were to play up here and Zara were to play down there, you'd pay more attention automatically to me, to Zara. 
because I'm downstage. I am closer to you. I am making that connection with you. We have forgotten whoever is up there. Yes? You finished? Sorry. Thank you. But, no. and the stage positions can also show power, relationships. So now we're gonna look at body positions since we just looked at stage positions. Your body positions where you will turn on stage. So, Nadia, you will demonstrate. I will demonstrate. If you notice the image, the body positions using feet looks like a clock. And again, Remember, it's the actors, right and left. So Nadia, yes, you're starting please. out in the full front position. This is all of my front right here. This is front. completely this is as, turned this is as to front the audience as, as I can be. So this is a full front of flat, dead on. Can I get a quarter right? Or profile right? This or profile right? Mm -hmm. That's what. That's quarter right. Give me a full profile right now completely turned to the side. Give me a three quarter. I feel, so, like, I feel like we're marching. I feel like you're marching or doing math, mm -hmm. you know? This is a three quarter, so you're seeing just some of her face, but not all. Full back, not seeing her face at all. Give me quarter left. Quarter left? Yeah. Sorry, three quarter left. Three quarter left which is the opposite side. Mm -hmm. Left profile, quarter left. Now quarter is sometimes called cheating out. So you might be talking to someone, come talk to me. Come talk to me. What do you want me to so say? So we're talking, <laughs> come six feet distance. So you're still in the frame, I'm still in the frame. So right now, Nadia and I are both in profile, mm -hmm. right? I am in profile what? You are profile right. And you are? No, your profile left. Left, and you are? And I'm profile right. Right, remember actors left and right. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are to cheat out or turn court and out the profile, you can only see the side, the profile of our face. Mm -hmm. That might work for maybe a confrontation. Back up. Right. Might work for a confrontation. Oh, might even work for two lovers. Darling. <laughs> Stay there though. I can't right? take it serious. <laughs> <laughs> but we're profile. Uh -huh. You can still see the face, but it's just profile. Let's say we are having a conversation though. You may want to get more of the facial expression. So we will turn quarter. And to allow the audience to feel more included in yes. the action. Because this shuts you out very right. much and cheat out so we're, we're like this we're still we're talking, talking but you can see more, you can of, see the more of us and you feel more included in what's happening up here and if any generally directors try to tell the actors don't face don't full don't use the full back position however if you're trying to make a statement of of, a, of, a, of sorts you that's when you could if through the back you can communicate something I could heave, I could be upset, and you can get that from, from the back. If I'm trying to show that I'm shy or I'm closed off from what is happening with everybody else around me, you could choose to use the back positions. But generally, mm -hmm. the strongest positions that people, that the theater world would strive for is the profiles, the quarter profile, not the three, right, not the three quarter. So the if quarter. you are in a production and you hear the director telling you to cheat out, they're asking you, to open your to body. To open your body and be in the quarter position. All right. Very simple. And that's, that's uh, body positions for you. Where are we going from here? We are going to wrap up with theater personnel. Yes. One thing I absolutely love about theater is that it is not a one-man show. Unless it is. Which is called a monodrama. But you still need, you still need the director, you still need the your lights. technical team, yes, you do. your costume people. So this is an awesome diagram showing the hierarchy of the various persons that you will meet in theater. So we are actually going to run through some of the people that are instrumental to making the entire production work. Most people only focus on the actors because those are the people who you see on stage, right? 
but 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 as i said it takes a team to make everything happen and that team generally begins with a producer somebody who has the moolah to make the show happen all right and if they don't have the money they might represent the company that has the money or they might get the funding so the producer would be at the top because they are paying the people and Hello for you people that I'm, I'm not sure if you're recognizing it yet, but theater is in every aspect of our lives, business, the way we speak. Mm -hmm. Some of our politicians, pastors, even teachers could take a few theater lessons. That's true. Like dramatic exits where you wrap up your laptop charger and, and leave. <laughs> you know, those, those are, it's, it's theatricality. It's dramatic. Some people would say you're so dramatic. It's, it's the same thing, essentially. All right. And I mean the projection as well, the articulation. Yes. yes. That yes. was a fantastic performance, by the way. Right? It was. <laughs> but now we're going into part of the management. So we have the business aspect right? as well. So now in theater, you have generally what you call a production team. This is made up of all the sub-directors who would work along with the director in creating his artistic vision. And just real quick, well... We're going to do the, the rundown. The game, yeah. We're going to play a game to help you remember some of these persons. All right. And, and, and even more than just remembering who they are, it's to know what their role and functions are. So that everybody is no stepping on toes. Everybody knows yes. the stage manager is responsible for this. The light designer is responsible for this. To, to lay it out very clearly. All right. And some of you might get them confused a little bit, especially if you're looking at persons in Antigua, because we don't have a huge industry. Yet. We don't have the luxury of having people who do individual one thing. roles. So, so, as a director, Zara is also a producer, and she's also costume designer. She's set, set designer, designer, she's lighting designer, 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 she's sound, sound designer. designer. <laughs> she's, she's the entire team, essentially. And producer sometimes. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, she's the production true. team. Um, even at and the, the playwright. School, and the playwright sometimes. Yeah. Even at the school level, um, when we had uh, like the drama festival, the teachers, yes. the theater arts teachers are who, they may be able to draw some people in and make that team, but they are generally the people who oversee and have to execute. Uh, it can get ticklish to direct something that you've written. It comes with its own yeah. challenges. But, um, but in professional companies, though, the roles that you see your teachers playing, because you called, like, what, 10 things just now? Yes, <laughs> pretty much. It would be 10 different persons. And remember, the playwright is the person who writes the play. And that's it. Right, and some, in some production companies, that's it. And the director doesn't always direct his or her own play right 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 so ready to hot seat right sure um before let's let's clarify something before the production team con com consists of the managers the lighting designer the sound designer the costume designer the set designer who all follow the director's lead the producer is who hires the director the directors who will go and do casting calls and all of that, auditions and so. But he generally knows the people who he wants on the team to help bring his vision, his artistic vision and concept to life. Please note, the, di the designers are not necessarily the operators yes. or the builders. Again, in our context, it's easy to mix them up because if I design the set, chances are I'm building it too. But generally, there's the people in the professional world who have very separate roles. I sit down home and I draw it, I give it to you and you go make it. I design the costumes, the costume mistress or master is the person who actually executes the making of the costumes and in the general running of the show ensures that if there's something to be sewn, if the costumes need to be washed, if anything needs to be done, the costume mistress or master is in charge of that. The lighting operator runs the board, though he may not have designed what light comes on at what point. He gets a cue sheet and he follows it. The sound operator is the same thing. All right? I think we can... Oh. I'm ready. I want to go first. Okay. So the name of the game, the strategy, is called Hot Seat. All right? So I'm going to ask... Ready. We heard you. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Explain the game. I was trying. Another pregnant pause. See them dramatic people. Teachers. I'm going to ask some questions and based on how Zara answers the questions we will get an idea of her role and function 
and should be able to work out who she is, meaning what theater personnel. So for example, Good morning. Good morning. How, How are, are you? I'm doing all right. That's lovely. All right. So um, tell me some of your, your skill sets, your strong areas. I am a very organized person. Uh, some people think I'm bossy, but it's not that I'm bossy. I like order. I like structure. And I work with timelines. Oh, Definitely. Wow. Okay, and are you are you good? We're a little behind schedule, by the way, so let's go. But it's my interview. You can't tell me we're behind schedule, okay? <laughs> so, do you work well with taking directions from someone else? I have to because I am helping to bring someone's vision to fruition. Ah. But at the same time, while I can take that direction, I'm giving others directions because I run a tight ship. So I am calling people. I am organizing the rehearsals. I am setting up meetings with the tech team, the director, because we have to get this right. OK. On the, the night of the shows itself, are you in charge? Yes. You're the stage manager, aren't you? I am. That's All right. the stage manager. Oh, my turn. Next. Hi. Hi. How are you today? Well, um, I'm doing OK. I'm doing all right. Is this your first time on stage? Yes. Generally, I try to be. This is your first time with a production? No, not with a production, but okay. on stage. I work more in the back. You know, I, I don't like people. I don't like people looking at me. Oh, what what is the color that you normally wear when you're working? Well, it, it, sometimes I wear black, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. I I'm more for uh, I, I I draw really 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 well. Oh, I see. You understand? And I love fashion. You love fashion. I love fashion, so I don't really only wear black. This is the and you same. have? Do you have any knowledge of makeup? Oh, girl, let me tell you, you see this foundation? It's flawless, isn't it? It's nice, I did it myself. Wonderful. Are you the costume designer? I am the costume designer. All right, so we'll do one more. So it's the night of the show, all right? Where are you? It's the night of the show? Yes, yeah, the night of the show. Where are you at? I am, I'm in the green room right now. In the what? The green room. Who is that? You know, just waiting, chilling. Oh, waiting okay, until. okay, okay, okay. What are you doing while you're in there? I am getting into a zone. I uh, have just finished my breathing exercises, and I'm listening to this music that is getting me into the zone. Oh, I see, I see, I see. You, uh, what are you wearing? Right now, it is... Um, 18th, late 18th century, so I am in a particular costume for that era. Okay. It's making me a little hard to breathe, but you know, the breathing exercises help. Okay. Are you playing, you're gonna be yourself or you're gonna be somebody else? Uh, I'm definitely gonna be somebody else. I wasn't born in the 18th century. Oh, she's even listening to me. Mm. You know, this is, this is why I can't deal with you actors, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's some, some very snobby. Actors. Snot, snot. Anyway, she's an actor, all right? So we finished the theater personal segment, and we're going to wrap up now, close up. That's and, right. um, what did you do, like, the multiple, multiple choice? I told y'all there'd be a test. We're teachers. There has to be a test, right? So we have some multiple choice questions, which we've taken from parts from, from sample questions for the CXC exam. And uh, let's go. Made up on the screen. Question one, and we're gonna see how well you were listening. Sasha is nervous oh about performing her monologue. When she gets nervous, she speaks so fast, no one can understand most of her words. Which of the following is the best exercise to assist her before going on stage? Now, one thing about the multiple choice questions, when you see certain words in all caps, best, most, chances are there are at least two options. That, that could sound, be right. Right, it sounds really good. It's like a trick question. Yeah, but the fact that it is in all caps, CXC is looking for you to pay extra attention to the stem of it. So, so the options are A, should Sasha take a jog around the building to release stress? B, 
Do a quick line rehearsal so she doesn't forget her lines. See? Say a few tongue twisters to warm up her articulators. Or D, practice yoga to stretch and relax her body. Yeah, watch Jeopardy. Dun, doom, 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 doom. <laughs> and you are correct if you said C. She should, tongue twisters. She should say a few lines to warm up her articulators. All right. Kerry is producing twisters, the yeah. annual fashion show for the clothing and textile students at her school. They can only afford a community center, which is extremely narrow. What type of stage might be best for the industrial department to build? A, an arena, B, an end stage, C, a thrust, or D, a traverse? Now, with this question, again, it's a fashion show. So immediately... We know arena is out. And we know... End stage is out. So it's between thrust and traverse. How do we decide? Decide. Well, they went to the trouble of telling us that the community center is extremely narrow, all right? Which means that we have something rectangular. I think that the best option would be the traverse. I think so too, because it's extremely Because it's extremely narrow. narrow. All right. Question three. A character is on stage during a live comedy show. The audience is not very involved in the performance. To be able to generate audience involvement, the actor should move further, A, upstage, B, downstage, C, left of center, D, right of center. Hmm. We did this. We actually did this. That's true. And you are correct if you said... B, B. <laughs> downstage. Down stage. The downstage area is your strongest plane, and after that, you have your center plane. All right? The public relations officer, this is the last question, of the Open House Theater posted the following advertisement. Stage manager needed for upcoming production. Must be disciplined, mm -hmm. organized, mm -hmm. and have good knowledge of production processes. Which of the following statements best describes the advert above? And again, remember, best is in all caps. A, the advertisement adequately outlines the qualities required of a stage manager. B, the advertisement does not adequately outline the qualities of the stage manager. C, the advertisement adequately outlines the roles and responsibilities of a stage manager. Or D, the advertisement does not adequately outline the roles and responsibilities of a stage manager. And you see how close those options are. You have to, have to, have to read those questions carefully. All right. You are correct if you said, A, the advertisement adequately outlines the qualities, qualities. Requi required of a stage manager. Those are qualities and not roles and functions. All right. Thank you so much for joining us here on Homeschool 101, the Theatre Arts Edition. Edition. All right. We do hope that you enjoyed your time here with us and that you learned something. See you at the next show. Free access, one time only. You've been watching Homeschool 101, a partnership between ABS Television and the Ministry of Education. Thank you for viewing this lesson. Join us again next time.